ever known that you really should be doing work, but instead find yourself on Instagram or checking your email or watching a lot of YouTube videos? If so, in this video, I'm gonna talk about six secrets of productivity and how you can stop procrastinating. I know procrastination is something that I have totally dealt with all my life. If you're wondering who I am and like, who is this lady anyway and why is she talking to me? My name is Brooke. I've scored perfectly on the SAT and ACT. As an adult, I've been a tutor for over a decade. So I've worked with a lot of students in terms of trying to help them be more effective in their studying. I've also created an online prep course for the ACT and SAT. You can check those out at supertutortv.com. I've written two books for the ACT math section. So that's kind of about me. Also, one last thing. We are having book giveaways later this month. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are where we're going to be announcing those, not here. So you've got to follow us on those. We're going to announce different contests on different sites. So follow us everywhere and you will keep in the know. But about this video, about productivity, if you want to be more productive, let's talk about the six secrets of productivity. The first one of these is to set your priorities. I find sometimes when I am getting in a big procrastination snowball, I just need to stop. And the first thing to do is to start to actually get things done that aren't immediately due and start to set your own deadlines. And the best way to do that first is to make a giant list of all the things that you have to do and that you want to get done. I like to do it on paper. If you want to do it on a computer, you can do it in notes. You can get a fancy program like Asana. You can do it in Google Calendar and Apple Calendar, however you want to do it. But create a list of things to do and then figure out what your priorities are. What are the things that you have to get done? And also put them in categories. Like what are the things that you have to get done on a schedule, right? There's certain days that you have to get things done by. And then what do you want to get done that there might not be a deadline or the deadline might be far off, but you know if you don't do part of it soon, you're going to be in big trouble. And those are the kind of things that what you can do is you can actually create newer, earlier deadlines for yourself so that you actually can knock those off the list. Let's talk about number two, make something overwhelming more manageable. One of the reasons that we procrastinate is that sometimes the tasks that we have to do feel gargantuan and we don't know where to start because the tasks are overwhelming and big. Maybe that's you have to write a paper and you hate writing papers because it's really annoying and you always feel like you're pulling your teeth and you don't even know where to start. Maybe it's writing your college essays that you know you need to get started on them and you don't quite know how to start or where to start and it just feels too daunting and so you just don't do anything. If you have a gargantuan feeling task, my best advice is to break that task into a more populated to-do list, to break it down into little tiny steps and then work through those baby steps one piece at a time. Okay, you don't have to finish whatever the big project is that you've been avoiding. You don't have to finish it right now. Can you do 15 minutes of it? Can you do an hour of it? But break something that's daunting and huge and ugly into something smaller and then attack. Okay, that's my tip number two. Number three, forget about yesterday and I want you to think about today and think about tomorrow. Another mistake that students make and that I've made in my life is that rather than focus on how am I going to not procrastinate this week, they focus on how they already procrastinated last week. There was a study done that basically followed, and I forget if it was like tutors or, or music teachers or teachers or something like that, but they had looked at teachers who with their students had sort of guilted them and dug into them when they didn't do their homework. And they talked to them about um, their past mistakes. And they said, okay, why didn't you do your homework this week? Why didn't you get anything done, right? And then they also looked at teachers who instead focused on not what you did last week, but what you're going to do next week. And that means that these teachers sat down with their students and said, hey, how are you gonna study this week? How are you going to push the needle forward? When are you going to sit down and read your book? What time do you have this week that you can make for this particular task? And they found that the people in the second group were much more effective at actually moving the needle and getting people to work harder and do more. And I think the lesson here is that if you obsess about how you haven't gotten things done and you obsess about the past and what you didn't do last week, that's only going to hurt you. Instead, what you need to do is have a fresh attitude and look forward. And again, engage in steps one and two, which I talked about, which basically are planning. So forget about yesterday, think about today, think about tomorrow, forgive yourself, get over it, move on, you can do this, you got this, okay? Next, find your study space. 
I know in today's modern world, it's really hard because you guys have Instagram, you guys have Twitter, you have Facebook, you have YouTube, you have like all these things. And there's always people sending us messages and we feel obligated to get back to those people, right? In fact, oftentimes your homework is literally online. I mean, how much torture is that? You have to go online to look up your homework and then you're on the internet and then suddenly your friends start messaging you. So you've got to figure out a way to create a good study space. If you can put yourself in a position to having no distractions, you know, turn off your phone, put it in the basement far away from where you are, sign out of all of your accounts on your computer. If you have to do homework on the computer, sign out of your Instagram, sign out of your Facebook, forget all the passwords, change it to something that's really hard to remember and then store it in a notes file on your phone. You can get one of those apps like I talk about in our 10 best apps video that like grows flowers and stuff while you work and doesn't let you touch your phone or your flower dies, right? You can get one of those. So whatever helps you in terms of building out your study environment, make sure that you can do that. Make sure that you can create a good environment to study in. The other thing I would advise is that you create something of a study ritual, right? It can be as simple as some snacks and some headphones, or it can be as complicated as saying, I'm gonna go get dropped off at the library at eight in the morning or at 10 in the morning on a Saturday so I can take my ACT practice test. You can also try studying at the times of day that you know you're most effective. Number five, work on your willpower. So another thing that keeps us from doing work or getting things done is willpower. Sometimes it's just a matter of we don't want it bad enough. We know we want to do things, but other things that are more immediate to us are more fun, right? I would rather play video games right now than I would do my homework. I would rather watch YouTube right now than study for a test. Whatever it is, our willpower can sometimes be weak and we only have a finite amount of willpower. And we need to do what we can to exercise that muscle and make it stronger. The best way to overcome that is to really focus on your long-term goals. Think about your long-term goals. I want you to imagine your future self, right? Who is your future self? Imagine yourself 10, 20 years in the future. I want you to picture what you look like at that stage in time, what you're gonna be doing, what kind of opportunities you have, what kind of money you wanna make, whatever it is, what kind of family you wanna have, what kind of environment you wanna live in. I want you to project that future self and then I want you to be motivated to work today because of what you think about in the future, right? What kind of future do you wanna build for you? If you can think about that, if you can project that future and you can be motivated by long-term goals instead of short-term goals, you will do better and you will be able to have more willpower. So think about your long-term goals. There's also a great book on this called The Willpower Instinct by Kelly McGonigal. You can actually hear one of her talks where she talks about some of the principles from Willpower Instinct online. If you look her up, Kelly McGonigal, she's super cool. She's rad, I recommend her. In case you feel like procrastinating some more right now. Okay, last tip, tell yourself the truth and stop the guilt trip. Final thing I'm gonna say, and this isn't all people, but a lot of people. A lot of people, and I know I kind of touched on this earlier, get into this cycle of thought in which they have a major emotional guilt trip that they send themselves on when it comes to whatever it is that they're avoiding. That this avoidance behavior is more than just procrastination. It's avoiding something that makes you nervous or that you don't like or that you've decided you don't like. And what I'm here to tell you is whatever lies you're telling yourself, you can stop telling those lies. Here are the kinds of lies that my students have told to themselves in the past that have caused them to procrastinate and not do work. One, I'm bad at math. Two, I'm bad at chemistry. Three, even if I work really hard, my best isn't gonna be good enough and then it's gonna hurt more because if I do my best and I try and I only get a mediocre score on this test or on the SAT or on the ACT, then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna feel even worse about myself because I know I tried and it didn't help. And that just means I'm stupid, right? Those are all lies. None of those are the truth. Nobody is bad at math. Nobody is bad at science. You're not bad at things. You just have more to learn. If you can adopt the growth mindset, if you can adopt the idea that you can improve, which is true, all of you have value, all of you have worth, all of you can improve, and all of you can make your goals happen if you set your mind to them and stop the guilt trip and stop thinking whatever it is that's got you in this total project dread zone and say, you know what? It's not the end of the world. It's no big deal. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do this much at a time. You break it down. You do all these other steps we talked about. You're going to be able to slay this procrastination beast and move forward with your life. I hope you guys like this video. So give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we have lots of other videos with lots of other tips. We have lots of other videos you can watch anytime that you want to procrastinate. But if you don't want to procrastinate, well, time to get off YouTube. Go, close your computer, 
work on your to-do list, get some things done, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.